Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tamasaka bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin thumma amma ba'id ya ibadullah food for thought don't act like an electrocuted dog inshallah ta'ala we'll come back to this concept but as a preface let's uh, let's get into the following the overall concept and meaning that i want each and every one of us to really pay close attention to is don't be a defeatist um, now just for clarity's sake a defeatist is defined as a person who expects or who is excessively ready to accept failure a person who expects or they are excessively ready to accept failure this is a person who suffers from defeatism which is the acceptance of defeat without struggle the acceptance of defeat without struggle and it's just often it comes with negative connotations it is a must that we don't have this type of mentality but that we are of those who are implementing the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in all affairs of our lives in our religious affairs first and foremost in our religious affairs first and foremost and also in the affairs of our dunya naam because you know we hear all the time that islam is a total way of life and this is the truth islam is a total way of life life islam has guidance for every aspect of our life from the manner and most important aspects of our lives from how we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how we believe in allah ta'ala and worship allah ta'ala these are the most important affairs naam all the way to those affairs that deal with ruling of countries the governing of states the judicial system from how we interact with each other and our code of conduct our morals all the way 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 down until the aspects of toiletries and the proper mannerisms and adab for using the bathroom islam what illah alhamd there is therein guidance for every aspect of our life every aspect of our life and it is important that we seek to learn and study our religion so that we may act in accordance with the guidance that is contained therein in any event it is incumbent that we do not allow ourselves to suffer from this defeatist type of mentality that we are not those who are readily willing to accept failure that we are not those who are ready to accept defeat without even a struggle right um the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in that famous hadith that's on the authority of abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu fi ma rawahu muslim fi sahih and that which he meant muslim he brings inside of his collection of authentic hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ihras yani ihras ala ma yanfa'uk to be diligent in chasing after that which benefits you ihrus ala ma yanfa'uk be diligent and strive after that which will benefit you wasta'in billah and seek the help of allah wala ta'jaz and do not lose heart or determination don't feel that you are helpless and thus it is a foregone conclusion and that's it you're just going to lose you're going to be defeated and it's over no never be like the electrocuted dog never allow yourself to be like the electrocuted dog al-alama ar-thaymin rahimahullah ta'ala 
he mentions as relates to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَلَا تَعْجَزْ And do not lose heart or determination. Don't feel as if you are in, yeah, I mean, feeble, incapable, and that you're just utterly helpless. Don't have these feelings, allow these feelings to overcome you to the extent that you don't even try. No. The recipe, the recipe has been clearly defined by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ihrus ala ma yanfa'uka wa stain billah to put to, to, to seek after that which will benefit you and to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la ta'ajaz and do not lose heart or determination. Naam, do not lose heart or determination meaning to the extent that you don't even try even to, yeah, to the extent you don't even try you don't put forth any effort you just figure oh, no, it's it, that's it, I'm, it's done, I can't do anything. La. And Anam Arthameen rahmatullah alayhi he mentions, he says وَلَا تَعْجَزْ يعني, Meaning, استمر في العمل وَلَا تَعْجَزْ Meaning, continue with the action and do not lose heart or determination. نعم, don't give up. But continue. وَلَا تَتَأَخَّرْ And don't delay it. Don't procrastinate. Don't delay it. نعم. وتقول, don't delay it and then you say إن المدة طويل والشغل كثير don't delay it and say oh it's good. the road is so long it's going to take so long there's so much to do no don't be like that don't psych yourself out don't talk yourself out of that which will benefit you in, 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 in striving don't talk yourself out of trying no try Try, seek after that which will benefit you. Try for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah ta'ala. Ask Allah, beg Allah to help aid and assist you at every step and at every turn. Don't give up without trying. Put forth some effort, bithilahi ta'ala. The Shaykh, he says, Ma tumta sumamta. Hey, he said, yani, as long as, you know, since you had uh, made your mind up, you know, you have an azima, you made your mind up, you have a determination. You had a determination for awwal al-amr in the first of the affair. You made your mind up, this is something that is going to benefit you. You were clear about this. This is something that's good for me. There's an upside in it for me. So, since you made your mind up and you have already seen as something that is good for you, in the first of the affair and you made your determination to go after it and to seek it, and that this is the thing that is best for you. And then you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't. Give up, don't stop, continue, continue, don't stop, but continue. This is an yani, extreme importance. Now, I want you to listen to what Shikarthi mean. He mentioned because this hadith is a hadith that is tremendous, and this is why you'll find a lot of yani, pieces of benefit coming from different angles that are mentioned from this particular hadith. But this is the reality. The, 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 the Imam he mentions, he says, hadith He said, This hadith in reality, It will need volumes, volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes of book that يعني, a person they will give explanation and commentary as relates to this particular hadith. This is how much benefit is contained in this particular hadith. But from this standpoint, and in this yani, reminder, in this food for thought, I want to focus in on the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Do not lose heart. Do not lose your determination. Do not feel as if you are helpless. And this is why I say, don't be like the electrocuted dog. Don't be like the electrocuted dog. Person, they come and they say, what in the world is he talking about electrocuted dog? What does electrocuted dog have anything to do with this situation? There was a study, or there was an experiment, we should say, in 1965, and it was conducted by Martin Seligman, Nam, or something like this, yeah, it's the pronunciation of his last name, Martin Seligman, right? And in this, him and his colleagues, what they did was they wanted to do some research on classical conditioning. They wanted to do some research on conditioning, okay? So in this experiment of theirs, what they did was is that they will put a dog into a cage 
that had uh, the yani the, the the floor of the of the cage was um, it had an electrical current that was running through it, right? So the floor of the cage was electrified. You you with me? Okay. They put the dog inside this cage. What they would do is they would ring a bell, and they would ring the bell, and then directly after ringing the bell, they would electrocute the dog. They would shock the dog, right? So they would do this a number of times to the extent that they would ring the bell, and then the dog would start to react. The dog would start to react because they're trying to prove that what that that yeah, I mean, conditioning will have an effect upon the individuals. This was what the, the first leg of their experiment. The second leg of their experiment, or the next thing they went on to do in this experiment, is that they would shock the dog. Again, now, the dog is still inside of this cage, the structure where it can't get out. All of the floor is electrified, right? So they would shock the dog. You with me? They would shock the dog, giving it no other option but just to get shocked. Then they moved to a next stage where they put the dog inside of a cage. And in this cage, there was a barrier that ran down the center of the cage. On one side of the barrier, the floor was electrified. On the other side of the barrier, the floor was not electrified. Ma'am, so if the dog would just easily step over this barrier, it could escape from being electrocuted. It can escape from being shocked. So they put the dog in this cage and you know, with this partition, and the partition was very easy for the dog to walk over it. So they put the dog in a cage, and they commenced on shocking the dog. Now, the expectation was that the dog was just going to walk to the other side and escape from being shocked. But to their surprise, the dog didn't do that. When the dog started to be you know, shocked, it just laid down. It just laid down and just took it. Right, so they were, they 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 theorized that this is because the dog had been conditioned to feel hopeless. The dog had been conditioned to feel hopeless. Now, why? Because the first scenario that it was put in, it was shocked and there was no escape. So the dog began to understand and to think that there's no escape. There's no use to try to do anything, so it just laid there. So to continue with the experiment, what they did was they brought a group of dogs that were never shocked. They never went through the first half of this experiment. So these dogs that were brought in, they were put inside of the cage. They had the partition in it. One side of the floor was electrocuted, or was, was, was electrified, excuse me, and the other side of the floor was not electrified, right? So when they put the dog in a side that was electrified, and then they started to shock it, this dog that had not been previously shocked, what did it do? It just got up and it walked to the other side. It tried. It moved around. And then once it realized that the, the floor on the other side of the partition was not electrified, it walked to that side. Now, it walked to that side. So, they, so yeah, I mean, the people in the scientific community and the psycho, yeah, I mean, uh, who study this psychology and the like, they theorize that hopelessness a person can be conditioned to be hopeless, to feel hopelessness. Now, and this is what they had uh, came up with. We had others that studied the chemistry of the brain and what areas of the brain are affected and so on and so forth, and they had a contrary opinion as it relates to this um, and the like. What's muhim, what we want to take away from, anybody who wants to, you know, who's studying this field or what have you, they can go back and they can do further research, research on these studies and see for themselves. But this is not, this is not what um, the intent here is, right? The intent is to focus in on that dog that felt as if it had no option, it had no recourse. Why? Because one of the overwhelming things that we can take away from this is that that particular dog, that particular animal, it was affected by its previous situations. It allow its previous situations or its previous experience to dictate what it did in the moment, thinking that there was no other option. Now, as human beings, how often do we find ourselves in similar situations where 
It could be based upon the manner in which we grew up. It could be based upon the influence from those who are around us, so on and so forth. How often is it the case that we talk ourselves out of things before even trying? Something will be mentioned and we come up with a million reasons why it can't be done. Well, it can't because of this, and it can't because of that, and it can't because of this. A person becomes pessimistic, where they're pessimists, where they everything is just, no, we can't because of X, Y, and Z. Now, there's always a lot of reasons that something can't be done or something will be difficult to be done. A person come up with a million reasons on why something is hard to be done, right? But at the end of the event, anything that was worth doing, you find that eventually what? It was done. It was done, Correct. It was done by what? By the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what people sometimes they forget. This is what people they forget. It's not because of you. It's not because you're so smart. It's not because you're so skilled and so on and so forth. It's by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But with that, you have to do what? You still have to put forth the effort. It is not that you can just yani, have well-wishing and then your well-wishing comes in. No, no. You have to put forth the effort. You have to put forth the footwork. So... The point is, is don't allow a negative environment, don't allow negative past experiences, so on and so forth, to mold you into believing that there is no hope. Of course there is hope. Ma'am, of course there is hope. You're alive, there is hope. If it is something that is in the realm of human possibility, it's possible. You have to be diligent and seek after that which will benefit you and then put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, he tells us to not to give up on seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, he says, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not give up hope in the mercy of Allah. Do not feel despair. Do not feel that it is impossible, that Allah's mercy will not reach you. No, never feel like that. But put forth effort. Repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the evil that you have done. Ask Allah ta'ala to forgive you. Strive hard in doing that which is correct. And then strive after those things which will benefit you. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't feel hopeless. Don't feel hopeless. Naam. Don't be like that dog that was electrocuted. That dog that allowed its prior experience to dictate its course of future action. Don't allow that. Don't allow that. Just because something did not work out the last time, then what do you do as a human being? What do you do? You try again. And you alter, you alter your course. Now, if it didn't work because you went exactly like this, then you change it up and you do it differently. And of course, we're talking about what? In affairs in which you have these options. So affairs of the dunya, for example, if you did X, Y, and Z and that didn't work, then you adjust the method, you adjust the method and try again. If that didn't work, then you adjust it and then you what? You try again. Try, 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 try until what? Until you're able to achieve it. If not, keep trying. Put your trust in Allah. Ask Allah and keep trying. That's how it has to be. This is how the believer has to be. If it didn't work like this, then we're going to adjust and we're going to do it like this. Now, again, this is an affairs of the dunya. When it comes to the deen, all you have to do what? Is apply the deen. All you have to do is apply the deen. Now, and... You learn more. You learn more about the deen and you apply the deen. You always strive to be a, you know, the best version of you that, 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 that you can be in that moment. And then you keep trying to get better and you keep trying to get better and you keep trying to get better. <laughs> you strive after that which will benefit you. It is incumbent that we utilize this hadith in every aspect of our life. Because how often, again, is it the case that we prevent ourselves from that which would benefit us? We prevent ourselves from good by talking ourselves out of it. Oh, I can't do it. It's too hard. Oh, I can't do it. I'm not that smart. Oh, I can't do it. I Subhanallah. If you, for example, if you, for example, took a test and you failed, you took a test and you failed. What you do next, your mentality, right? The mentality is going to have a bearing on what you do next. Because you could have taken that test and you failed. So you could walk away and you could say, you know what? I'm stupid. I I'm stupid. I can't. I'm, I'm dumb. This ain't me. I'm stupid. 
Now, once you have done that, you've set yourself up for loss. Now, you've talked yourself out of it already. So now you're not even going to try. Why? Because your mind is telling you, I'm stupid. I can't. I can't. So if you say you can't, I believe you. You can't. You, you, you understand that? If you say you can't, I believe you. You can't. Not that it can't be done. Not that it's not possible for you to do it. But you are saying that you can't do it. Then yeah, you can't do it. Because you don't have what it takes to get it done. You don't have the mentality needed to get it done. So yeah, you say you can't do it. Yeah, then you can't do it. That's one way you could look at it. You can come back and this is what other people do. You can say, man, that test was too hard. That test was too hard. Okay. So now what are you doing? Now you're blaming factors in which you have no control over. Now you're blaming everybody else. You're putting the blame somewhere else. Oh, you failed because the test was hard? That's why you failed? Because the test was too hard? Huh. So now you lost again. Because now you're going to allow outside factors to dictate what you feel you can and can't do. The test is too hard. It's too much. Oh, that there is too hard. I can't do it. Oh, you do this? No, that's too ambitious. Can't be done. Yeah, subhanAllah. If somebody else did it, we can do it. Now, if somebody else did it, that means it could be done. If somebody passed that test, that means you could pass the test. Right? Okay. So if you want to blame yourself by saying that you're stupid in this way, then you, then you set yourself up for loss. That's your excuse now. I'm dumb, so I'm not even going to try if you say the test was too hard, you blame blaming outside factors. Now you're saying, okay, the test was too much. It's the test fault. Not my fault. It's the test fault for being too hard. The teacher fault for making it unnecessarily hard. So it's their fault. But then, but then what? Now you set yourself up. So yeah, I'm going to lose every time because it's just too hard. So you ain't never going to get anywhere. What's the other option you can take? And it could be more. But I'm just saying what comes to my mind right now in the moment. But what's the other option you can take? I didn't study enough. So now, once you do that, this now, this answer, this course is in your control. I thought I put forth enough studying, but I didn't. So now what does that mean? Now that means I'm going to go back and study harder next time. I'm going to change the, change, you know, do some adjustments on my studying habits. I'm going to do some adjustments on my, on my reading. I'm going to do some adjustments on my prep and you know stuff like this and yeah I'm gonna do some adjustments and I'm gonna try again because if somebody passed it I can pass it if he passed it I can pass it if she passed it I can pass it right so I'm gonna try harder now once this becomes your mentality what I'm gonna try harder why because this thing is gonna be beneficial for me me learning this information and mastering this information is going to be good for me. Me passing this test, passing this course, passing this exam, getting this certification, so on and so forth. This is going to be good for me. So I'm going to strive hard over what benefits me. I'm going to study hard for that test. I'm going to study longer. I'm going to study harder. Right? And most importantly, I'm going to put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going to ask Allah to help me. I'm going to ask Allah to assist me. I'm going to seek the assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not going to feel helpless. I'm not going to feel incapable. I'm not going to feel that I can't do it. I'm not going to feel that I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. No, I'm not going to feel like that. I know this is good for me. I'm going to chase after it. I'm going to put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to work hard. And I'm not going to give up. People with that type of mentality, they're successful. They're successful. Now, when it comes to the dunya, and that's why I bring the example from the dunya, it's easy to see, right? It's easy to see how, yeah, now nah, if you take that, you're going to be successful. What about the akhirah? What about the hereafter? Of course, first and foremost, you apply this, 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 this guidance, you're going to be successful. Now, nah, you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You seek after what benefits you from being religious, from establishing your obligations and staying away from the prohibitions and so on and so forth, that you do the voluntary and the recommended. Now, you strive hard. You strive, you strive, you strive, you strive hard. You learn. You seek knowledge. You seek and You learn. You implement it. You seek to understand it so you can implement it. You can live in accordance to it. Put it into practice. Now, you ask Allah to help you. You ask Allah to benefit you. 
and you don't feel helpless. You don't allow the shaitan to come to you and say, you such a sinner, why you even keep trying? Just stop. You sin too much. Just stop. Don't worry. Don't try no more. Just give up. You're so horrible. Just stop. You're not good enough to learn Arabic language. Just stop. You're not going to memorize Allah Ta'ala's book. Look how feeble you are. You can't remember nothing. You're too old. Yeah, subhanAllah. There was a brother in Egypt with us. He had begun memorizing the Quran in his late, late 40s. His, he was older than I am right now. Huh? He was older than I am right now. In his late 40s, he began to memorize the Quran. And by the time he was in his early to mid 50s, he had finished it. So what, what you mean to owe? There's been people who have started to memorize the Quran even after that. Even in his 60s. And they, and they memorized it. So what do you mean? What do you mean? Unless there is something that is physically wrong with you, like dementia or, 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 or uh, 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 Alzheimer's and so on and so forth, may Allah Ta'ala give us all afiyah wa salama, then okay, this is something that's this is something different, okay? We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who all have the same set of tools, who all have this, yani, who all, if they put forth the effort, bithin lahi ta'ala, they can see something. So don't talk yourself up by saying, I'm too old. What you mean too old? You, 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 your brain is still okay? Uh-huh. Mentally, you're okay. You're mentally sound. You can see. You can hear. Huh? There's people that's blind that memorize the Quran from hearing. Okay, so you have your faculties. So, so what do you mean you can't? What do you mean you can't? You mean you're not willing to try? That's what that means. You're not willing to try. But don't tell me you can't. You could if you tried to. Bismillahi ta'ala. And a tawfiq is from Allah ta'ala. But if you put forth effort and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's possible. But as soon as you psych yourself out, then yeah, you can't do it. So, if we applied this to our deen, if we applied this to our deen and we just kept trying, every time we fell down, we're going to try harder, make a sin, I'm going to make toba, ask Allah to forgive me, try to stay away from that ever, yeah, never do it again, stay away from that for, for forever and never do it again, and you live your whole life on that manner, that you keep trying to do better, and every time you mess up, you ask Allah to forgive you, and you try to do better than he was before, you mean to tell me that that person like that, that's not how the people of Jannah are? There's somebody going to Jannah that 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 that, that made yani that's that that was uh never made a sin, never came up short. Hmm? Oh, oh, so that's not the case then? So the people of Jannah are people that they, they, they made sins in dunya? And they ask for forgiveness, they made tawbah, they ask Allah to 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 forgive them, and they had a lot of that inside of their record. Oh, this is how the people in Jannah are? So so then now what are you talking about? What do you mean you can't? Hmm? The man comes on the day of judgment with 99 scrolls of sins. The bitaqa, the card that has on it, la ilaha illallah, the shahada. And that outweighs, and he enters into the jannah. Remember, each scroll, far as the eye can see. 99 scrolls, far as the eye can see. On the day the earth is flattened. Eh? It's no hills, it's no plateaus, it's no mountains. It's flattened. You know how far you can see when it's flat? His scrolls is like that, 99, far as the eye can see, filled with, filled with sins. He makes it, he makes it. But 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 you that bad, right? No, just Don't allow the shaitan and the evils of yourself to psych you out. So now if we apply this to what? To our to our religion, you, you you're gonna tell me you, you don't think you're gonna be successful? Of course you're gonna be successful. Shaitan, he's gonna try to convince you, don't do it, you too bad, don't do it, you can't do it, you feeble, huh? Don't believe that. Don't be like the dog that got electrocuted. Just food for thought. Illa liqa. Astaghfirullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.